All right, what's going on guys? My name is Nick, also known as Tetra Ninja, and today's gonna be my second Mac tutorial video for commentators who use Mac hardware and software. And in the first video, I showed you guys how to go about recording a live commentary session using QuickTime Player as well as Photo Booth. And in this video, I'm gonna sh be showing you my exact render, export, and quality settings for prepping a video and getting it ready for direct upload to YouTube. So the main two main programs I'm gonna be working with once again are ITV and Final Cut Pro. So let's pop open ITV right here. We got our library of games that I have saved stored up. And we're just going to select the last Black Ops video that I, that I recorded. So what we want to do is first select it, then right click on the video, go into edit. And this will bring up a timeline of the video. And well, in most cases when you're recording, you're going to be recording a little bit of the lobby itself, which you really won't need. So if you click these two triangles right here, this will bring up uh, green a uh, yellow line sorry highlight the areas that you want to record I usually record or export out uh, to this black ops loading screen right here and as well I like to include the, the loading screen of the actual gameplay so right about there is perfect so from here right click on the timeline go to export clip and by default it, when you first open ITV, it will export as H.264 without any re-encoding. And I told you guys before, this would be perfect because it is the fastest and it has amazing quality. Uh, but the only problem with this setting is when you import it into Final Cut, you get the, these random green flashes that come up on the screen, which aren't very good for production quality wise. So this would be awesome, but uh, it's not reliable. So what I do is I record, export it as a QuickTime movie. So under QuickTime Formats, go to QuickTime Movie, go into Options, Size should be set at 1280 by 720 HD, that is good as it is. And then for Compression Type, I, go to, I scroll up and go to H.264. For frames, I go to 60, and for compression compression type, I go to best. And this is kind of overkill uh, for compression settings as well as frame rates. Uh, but the way I see it is, first off, you're exporting from this program as well. Once you get it all rendered out, you're gonna export it once again from Final Cut Pro. So it's gonna be like taking a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. Uh, in any case, you're gonna be losing some quality. Uh, I don't really notice a massive difference if I drop it down to medium, but I'm just an OCD about my quality settings, so I just keep it at the best settings in all cases. And it really only costs you about five minutes extra of export settings directly out of ITV, so it's not a big deal in my opinion. So there it is, we go to OK, go to OK once again, and name it whatever you want. I just got to name it Dom Havana, number two, hit save. And there you go, it's gonna be exporting out of ITV. We can close this window if you want, but as you can see right there, it still says we're exporting. And this process, exporting out of ITV, usually takes about a half hour. Uh, so if you wanna make a video, uh, I suggest that you just plan ahead, uh, plan ahead for the next night what gameplay you're gonna use and export it overnight so you don't have to sit there twiddling your thumbs. And I'm just going to stop this exportation because I've already exported this video out of ITV for you guys, so I, we won't have to do it again. So let's close ITV right here. Now let's open Final Cut, the video right there, as you can see. Let's open Final Cut with a fresh new file. So we're going to import that file. Havana DOM. Find it right there. Going to import it in to our timeline. There. Oh, missed there. There we go. When it asks you to change sequence settings to match clip settings, just select no. All right, so the so we there's our our video right there. But once again, we weren't exactly. Oh wait, yeah, I did export it exactly. But if you, uh, I'll I have a little bit extra right there. If you want to cut that out, just hit select the option right there. Hit B. That'll bring up your razor blade tool. S Cut that out, hit A to deselect your razor blade tool, select the section that you want to cut out, there you go, drag it back to the front, and now we'll get right into the export settings. 
first thing I usually do is what you notice with a lot of commentators when you're uh, exporting out of Total Media Extreme or ITV, uh, you'll get these random black bars that show up either at the top, the left hand corner, or the right hand corner of the video. Uh, I don't like those black bars, so what I do is I just expand the video a little bit just to get rid of them. So I expand, click the corner of the video, expand, and that is good enough right there. Cool. Now let's move into our sharpen. So under effects, go into video filters, select sharpen, and then sharpen again. And that'll kind of make our video very pixelated just because it's a sharpened at max settings. So let's double click on the video, hit filters. And as you can see, the mix on the sharpen is at 100%. Uh, we don't need 100%. What I usually do is, is I, I usually input 20, and that's good enough for me right there. What sharpen does is just makes it, the words, such as the text on the videos, a little bit clearer. Okay, now let's move into the actual color correction. So once again, hit effects, video filters, color corrector, and color corrector again. And then this will bring up this little color wheel, and I really don't touch much of this. Uh, it really depends on the map. Uh, if you have a brighter map such as Array, uh, I usually drop down the white so it's not as bright. <laughs> but if you have darker maps, I drop it, the whites up a bit, which will make the, a little bit brighter as well, as you can see right there. And if you find that the map's too dark, you can up your blacks as well. But I don't stray too far uh, off these defaults, as you can see right there. Cool, uh, and that is basically it. Um, next, we can add in our commentary by going to Tools, going to VoiceOver. As of right now, my blue snowball is uh, set and ready to go. As you can see, I'm getting some nice audio levels. Uh, you actually have to render out the audio, so go to Sequence, Render Out before you can actually do the commentary. Uh, this doesn't take too long, but what I usually do is I just render out both of them. Uh, just so the, the video is fluid as you commentate it. If you try to commentate without with an unrendered video, it will be kind of choppy and slow as you can see right there. But uh, So let's stop this, but if you once you render it out, uh, let's close this tab. Uh, this is the same video but already rendered out as you can see. Uh, just hit play as you can see it's a lot more fluid and a lot more clear to see what's going on in the gameplay so once again just hit your hit your record button it'll give you a countdown do your commentary say what you want to say hit stop and that is it cool now that we have a rendered video with commentary we're ready to export it at a final cut so once they're ready go to file export using quicktime conversion once again there it is, name it whatever uh, you want to name it, Dom Havana Upload, I spelled upload wrong but it really doesn't matter, size 1280 by 720 once again, cool, and then settings, and once again compression type as H.264, and the next part uh, it really depends if this video, the video I'm uploading is going to Machinima or not. If the video is going to Machinima, I use high, higher quality settings just because if you guys know uh, quality of videos on Machinima are usually a lot lower and than what they are originally on the director's channel. So I usually, usually like to uh, use a higher compression settings as well as a higher frame rate uh, just so it's not, it doesn't look as uh, crummy once it gets done on Machinima. So if it's a Machinima video, I use a medium compression setting and a frame rate of 60 frames per second. Keyframes automatically keep it at 24 every 24 frames. Encoding always best quality. This should be default, so you shouldn't have to change this, but just saying. But if it's a video for my channel, I don't notice the difference between 30 frames a second and for compression quality, I have it in between medium and low. So once again, I don't really see the difference if it's for my channel. So I hit OK right there, hit OK once again, and then I hit save and now it's exporting directly to the desktop. For about a 10 minute video, you're looking at about six, uh, 600 to 800 megabytes for a file. And for me, that takes about uh, 45 minutes to an hour to upload. And just out of curiosity, if you're wondering how big the file was that we originally exported from ITV, it is 3.6 gigabytes, which is fairly large. But once again, it's all a matter of re retaining as much quality as we want uh, for maximum quality once we export out of Final Cut Pro. So yeah, those are my exact export settings. 
Uh, my advice to you guys, if you guys are in the market for a new computer uh, for rendering videos and saving videos and making videos, um, all rendering is usually done by your processor, so either your CPU, but a small part of it's also done by your graphics processing unit or your GPU, but that's uh, not in all cases. Some computers don't even have GPUs or even good ones. So if you're going for a desktop, I highly suggest you guys go with an, something with a uh, quad core uh, with an i7 processor. Uh, but if you're going with uh, a laptop, at least go for a dual core. Uh, but more rec more recently, uh, quad core laptops have just come out. My, if you're wondering, my computer itself is a 2009 MacBook Pro that I've upgraded a bit. So it has a 2.26 uh, gigahertz Intel Core Dual. Uh, originally it had two gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, but I upgraded it up to four. But once again, most of your rendering and exporting is done by your processor, so RAM really doesn't matter. Uh, next thing tip I can give you guys is, usually if you're rendering a lot of videos, the, the factory shipped hard, hard drive will not be big enough for you. Uh, so I originally had about I think an 80 gigabyte hard drive and I was filling it up after rendering about three videos So I upgraded to a 500 gigabyte up, uh, hard drive. Uh, my hard drive is a hybrid between a regular solid-state hard drive and Sorry a regular HDD hard drive and a solid-state hard drive. It's made by I forget what it's made by um I can't remember, but it's a hybrid between the two. Solid state hard drives are a little bit more expensive and they're a lot smaller. Um, and I just went with something between, which was pretty fast and gave me gave me decent size at 500 gigabytes. So yeah, those are my export settings and my render settings. Hopefully this video has been somewhat helpful to you guys. Uh, if it has, all I ask is that you guys just give the video a quick rating. Uh, it just helps me out a lot. And as well, if you like gameplay, and most likely if you're watching this video, you're planning on do gameplay, I obviously post gameplay of either Call of Duty, uh, Halo Reach, as well as other various games. So I encourage you guys to check out my channel. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for the next tutorial.